I'll make two points. Um, the first is um, you mentioned Hajimin al Husseini and his uh, collaboration with the Nazis. Entirely legitimate point to raise, but I think one can also say definitively had Haj Amin al Husseini never existed, the Holocaust would have played out precisely Certainly. Um, as it did. Certainly. As far as um, Palestinian opposition to Jewish immigration to Palestine um, during the 1930s is concerned, it was of a different character than, for example, British and American um, rejection of uh, Jewish immigration. They just didn't want Jews on their soil. Yeah, objectively, it helped the Germans kill the Jews. In the Palestinian case, their opposition to Jewish immigration was to prevent the transformation of their homeland into a Jewish state that would dispossess them. And I think that's an important distinction to make. Um, the other point I wanted to make is we've we've spent the past several hours talking about uh, uh, Zionism, transfer, and so on. But I think there's a more fundamental aspect to this, which is that um, Zionism, I think, would have emerged and disappeared as yet one more utopian political project had it not been for the British. Um, what the preeminent Palestinian historian, Walid Khalidi, um, has termed the British shield. Because I think without the British sponsorship, we wouldn't be having this discussion today. Um, the British um, uh, sponsored Zionism for a very simple reason, which is that during World War I, uh, the Ottoman armies attempted to march on the Suez uh, Canal. Suez Canal was the jugular vein of uh, the British Empire, um, you know, between uh, Europe and India. And the British came to the conclusion that they needed to secure the Suez Canal from any threat. And as the British have done so often in so many places, how do you deal with this? Well, you know, you, you bring in a uh, foreign minority, implant them amongst a hostile uh, population and establish a protectorate over them. I don't think um, a Jewish state in Palestine had been part of British intentions. And the Balfour Declaration very specifically speaks about a Jewish national home in Palestine. In other words, a British protectorate. Um, things ended up taking a different course. Um, and I think the, the, the most important development was uh, World War II. And I think this had maybe less to do with the Holocaust and more to do with the effective bankruptcy of the United Kingdom uh, during that war and its inability to sustain um, its global uh, empire. It ended up giving up India, ended up giving up uh, Palestine. And it's in that context, I think, that we need to see um, uh, the emergence of a, uh, of a Jewish state in Palestine. And again, a Jewish state means a state in which the Jewish community enjoys um, not only a demographic majority, but an uncontestable demographic majority, an uncontestable territorial uh, hegemony, and an uncontestable political supremacy. And that is also why, after 1948, the nascent Israeli state confiscated, I believe, up to 90% of uh, lands that had been previously owned um, by Palestinians who became citizens of Israel. It is why the new Israeli state imposed a military government on its population of Palestinian citizens between 1948 and 1966. Um, it is why the Israeli state effectively um, reduced uh, the Palestinians living within the Israeli state as citizens of the Israeli state to second-class citizens, on the one hand, promoting Jewish nationalism and Jewish nationalist parties, on the other hand, doing everything within its power to suppress and eliminate Palestinian or Arab um, uh, nationalist movements. And that's why today there is a consensus among all major human rights organizations that Israel is an apartheid state, what the Israeli Human Rights Organization 
B'Tselem describes a regime of Jewish supremacy the, the, between the river yes, and the sea. You're, you're really tempting a response yes. from the other side on, on the last few sentences. And we'll, talk, yeah, okay. we'll talk about uh, the claims of, of apartheid and so on. It's a fascinating discussion. We need to have it. Uh, Norm? On the question of the responsibility of the Palestinian Arabs for the Nazi Holocaust, direct or indirect, I consider that an absurd claim. Uh, as Gromyko said, and I quoted him, the entire Western world turned its back on the Jews. To somehow focus on the Palestinians strikes me as completely ridiculous. Number two, as Muin said, there's a perfectly understandable reason why Palestinian Arabs wouldn't want Jews, because in their minds, and not irrationally, these Jews intended to create a Jewish state which would quite likely have resulted in their expulsion. I'm a very generous person. I've actually taken in a homeless person for two and a half years. But if I knew in advance that that homeless person was going to try to turn me out of my apartment, I would think 10,000 times before I took him in. Okay? As far as the actual uh, complicity of the Palestinian Arabs. If you look at uh, Raoul Hilberg's three-volume classic work, The Destruction of the European Jury, he has in those thousand-plus pages one sentence, one sentence on the role of the Mufti of Jerusalem. And that, I think, is probably an overstatement, but we'll leave it aside. The only two points I would make, aside from the Holocaust point, is number one, I do think the transfer discussion is useful because it indicates that there was a rational reason behind the Arab resistance to Jewish or Zionist immigration to Palestine, the fear of territorial displacement and dispossession. And number two, there are two issues. One is the history, and the second is being responsible for your words. Now, some people accuse me of speaking very slowly, and they're advised on YouTube to turn up the speed twice to three times whenever I'm on. One of the reasons I speak slowly is because I attach value to every word I say. And it is discomforting, disorienting, where you have a person who's produced a voluminous corpus, rich in insights and rich in archival sources, who seems to disown each and every word that you pluck from that corpus by claiming that it's either out of context or it's cherry picking. Words count. And I agree with Lex. Everybody has the right to rescind what they've said in the past. But what you cannot claim is that you didn't say what you said. I'll stick to the history, not the current propaganda. 1917, the British, the, the Zionist movement began way before the British supported the Zionist movement for decades. In 1917, the British jumped in and issued the, uh, the Balfour Declaration supporting the emergence of a Jewish uh, national home in Palestine, which most people understood to mean eventual Jewish statehood in Palestine. Most people understood that in Britain and in his, uh, among the Zionists and among the Arabs. Um, but the British declared the Balfour Declaration or issued the Balfour Declaration not only because of imperial self-interest. And this is uh, what you're basically saying. They had the imperial interests, a buffer state which would protect the Suez Canal from the east. Uh, the British also were motivated by idealism. And this, incidentally, is how Balfour described the reasoning behind issuing the declaration. And he said, the Western world, Western Christendom, owes the Jews a great debt, both for giving uh, the, the world and the West, if you like, uh, values, social values as, as embodied in uh, the, the Bible, 
um, social justice and all sorts of other things. And the Christian world owes the Jews because it persecuted them for 2,000 years. This debt we're now beginning to repay with the 1917 declaration favoring Zionism. But it's also w worth remembering that the Jews um, weren't proxies or attached to the British um, a, a imperial endeavor. They were happy to receive British support in 1917, and then subsequently when the British ruled Palestine for uh, 20, 30 years, um, a, but they weren't part of the B British imperial uh, design or mission. They wanted a state for themselves, the Jews, happy to have the British support them, happy today to have the Americans support Israel. But it's not because we're stooges or extensions of American imperial interests. Um, the British, incidentally, always uh, described in Arab uh, narratives or propaganda as consistent supporters of Zionism. They weren't. The first British rulers in Palestine, 1917-1920. Herbert were, Samuel. No, no, before Herbert Samuel. Samuel came in 1920. The British ruled there for three years previously, and most of the leaders, the British generals and so on, who were in Palestine were anti-Zionist. And subsequently, in the 20s and 30s, the British occasionally... Um, curbed Zionist immigration to Palestine, and in 1939 switched horses and supported the Arab national movement and not Zionism. They turned anti-Zionist and basically said, you Arabs will rule Palestine within the next 10 years. This is what we're giving you by limiting Jewish immigration to Palestine. Uh, uh, but the Arabs didn't actually understand what they were being given on a silver platter, Husseini again, and he said, no, no, we can't accept the British White Paper of May 1939, which had given the Arabs everything they wanted, basically, self-determination in an Arab-majority state. So what I'm saying is the British, uh, at some point, uh, did support the Zionist uh, enterprise, but at other points were less consistent in the support. And in 1939, until 1948, when they didn't vote even for partition, for Jewish statehood in Palestine, uh, in the UN resolution, they didn't support Zionism during the last decade of the mandate. It's worth remembering that. I I'd like to respond to that. I mean... Speaking of propaganda, um, I find it simply impossible to accept um, that Balfour, who as British Prime Minister in 1905 was a chief sponsor of the Aliens Act, which was specifically- He changed his mind. Which was specifically designed to, to keep, keep persecuted Eastern European Jews out of the streets of, of the UK, mind. and who was denounced as an anti-Semite by the entire British Jewish establishment. A decade later, all of a sudden- Changed his mind. This, people change their minds, but when the, when, when, when the changing of the mind just coincidentally happens to coincide um, with the British imperial interest, I think perhaps the transformation is, is, is a little more superficial than he's being given credit for. It, it was clearly, a British imperial venture, and if there had been no threat to the Suez Canal during World War I, regardless of what Balfour would have thought about the Jews and their contribution to um, history and their per and their persecution and so on, there would have been no Balfour declaration. Can I ask you, real quick as a question on that? Why did the British ever cap immigration then from Jews to that area at all? Well. We're talking now about twenty nineteen seventy. Sure, but I'm saying that if it was if no, the whole goal was just to be an imperialist project, like there were terrorist attacks from Jewish. Uh, from yes, but you're talking. You're talking. Ta I'll answer. Yeah, in the forties. Yeah, and we're talking now about nineteen seventeen, and and as I mentioned earlier, I don't think the British had a Jewish state in mind. That's why they used the term Jewish national home. I think what they wanted was a British protectorate, loyal to and dependent upon uh, the British. I think an outstanding um, review of British policy towards these issues during the mandate has been done by Martin Bunton of the University of Victoria. And, and he basically makes the argument um, that once the British realized the mess they were in, certainly by the late 20s, early 30s, they, they recognized these the mess they were in, the irreconcilable differences, and basically pursued a policy of just muddling on. Um, and, and, um, and muddling on in the context of British rule in Palestine 
um, whose overall purpose was to serve um, for the development of, of Zionist institutions, uh, Yeshuv's economy, and so on, meant, even if the British uh, were not self-consciously doing this, um, preparing the groundwork for the eventual establishment of a Jewish state. I don't know if that answers your question. Except they did turn anti-Zionist in 1939. Yes, yes of course. And no, maintained they were being that shot off by... And uh, maintained that Zionist... Yeah. No, no, before yeah. they were being shot yeah. off. But maintained that anti-Zionist posture until 1948. Okay. Uh, and, and if I may, just also one point. Um, you mentioned Hajamin al-Husseini during uh, World... Entirely legitimate. Um but what I w- but what I would also point point out is that you had a Zionist organization, um, the Lehi. Three hundred people. Three hundred people. One of whom happened to become an Israeli prime minister, an Israeli foreign minister, a speaker of Israeli parliament. Um, Maybe you should give his name. Yitzhak Shamir, uh, proposing an alliance with Nazi Germany in 1941. Shamir proposed. Shamir. Well, no, the Lehi. Proposed. Some people in the Lehi proposed. Of which Shamir yeah, was a prominent leader. Yeah, but this is a red herring also. No, no. Okay, well, if he's a red herring, uh, uh, Hajjabin was an is an a red un- whale. Un- un- I'm sorry. <laughs> the Lehi was an unimportant organization in the Yishuv. 300 people versus 30,000 belong to the Haganah. So it was not a very important organization. It's true, before the Holocaust actually began, they wanted allies against the British where they could the, find we're them. We're talking 1941 and they, here, not 1931. We're talking 1940. 41, uh, from what I recall. 1940. They, were, they approached the, 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 the German Br- emissary in, in Istanbul or something. Yes. Istanbul. And, and, they, and if I may, yeah, proposed right. an alliance with Nazi Germany on what the Leahy described as the on the basis of the shared, of ideologi- shared were, ideological no, no, they principles. Share ideological. Well, they said they did. No, they, they did. They, they reviled. Why are you doing the, these the, things? Of the course Lechie they was said reviled that. You by know the, the state, but the you, know was that, reviled. you know what the statement said on the basis of a shared ideology. Why do you say no? You think that you the Lechie, just, wait, the Lechie people say, were Nazis? Is that what you're saying? They said they were. They said. No, are you saying that? Forget okay. statements. You like okay. to quote things, but I were they like were they Nazis? Were the were the, na- were the Lehi Nazis? That's what I'm asking. What did he Some just of them supported say? Stalin. Did he say that the basis of the pact was their agreement on ideology? There wasn't any pact. They suggested. I they said, proposed an agreement. It, right. And what did the agreement say? They wanted arms against the British. That's what, what they wanted. The yeah, well, say? that's what Hajime al Husseini wanted also. That's what no, no, but others they, they didn't, in the, India. The Lehi people didn't work in Berlin uh, helping the Nazi regime. I mean, what, what the IRA wanted also. No, but this is what Hajime al Husseini did. You know that he was an anti Semite. You, you've probably read some of his works. Yes. It wasn't just anti-British. Yes. And, and, it was also anti-Semitic. And, and the, so he had a common ground with Hitler. I, I, think, I think we can agree. Not every anti-Semite is a Hitlerite. I think I we can. That part, he literally he worked with the Nazis to, say, to recruit people. He wasn't just yes, a guy posting. And he was an ha- absolutely revolting, <laughs> disgusting human being. This I'm happy I to have hear. No, but the if problem you is, you're, wait, you're saying that Hussein was his influence. That. You're saying the movement was... But I, I don't even understand... Of all the crimes you want to ascribe to the Palestinian people, trying to blame them directly, indirectly, indirectly, or indirectly, three times removed for the Nazi Holocaust is completely lunatic. Hold on. The, wait, there's not a, he's not blaming them for the Holocaust. <laughs> yes, he's saying that from the perspective, no, no, no. wait, 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 no. He's saying that from no. the perspective of Jews in the region, Palestinians That's would have been part of the region. That is exactly you have not that is read him. what he said. I've read That's, him. You've, you've read, read him. You don't understand him. He's just he, right he, here. Believe me, <laughs> I'm a lot more literate than you, Mr. Borelli. I'm going to believe the guy that wrote you the stuff. You read Wikipedia said. That's great. I read and you don't even speak Hebrew and you call yourself an Israeli historian. We're all here on different grounds. I just want, if I can just respond to you. No, no, no. I'm just saying that the there, there were two. There were two tricks. No, there were. That's fine. There were two tricks that are being played here that I think is interesting. One is you guys claim that the Leahy was trying to forge an alliance with Nazi Germany that's because of a trick. shared ideology. That's what they said. Yeah, but hold that's on. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Said. No, no. It's about what you said. You brought that up to imply that Zionism I'm must be inexorably up, linked no, to. No, no, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Not, wait, wait, no, you're on. putting words in my mouth. No, no, no. Okay, wait. Well, then, what was the purpose of sh- of saying that the Lehi claimed that they, the Lehi, who were the a small I group about. of people that were reviled by many in Israel, in or not many, by everybody but, yeah. practically. D- well, they were called them, terrorists. Well, so yeah. reviled. The Zionist movement called them terrorists. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So and, the and hunted them. And hunted them. Shamir called himself a terrorist. They were so irrelevant that their leader. 
ended up being kicked upstairs to the leader of the Israeli parliament. That's Israeli parliament. To the Israeli years hence. To Israeli foreign minister. And Begin was and also a part. Uh, yes. You want to you want to characterize him as irrelevant as well? Go no, ahead. No, no. C- characterize him as relevant or irrelevant based on what happens decades later. The timeline matters. Well, the question is, what is the point of saying that the Leahy tried to forge an alliance? Why, why is, why is, why is relevant is bringing up the Mufti of Jerusalem and trying to blame the Holocaust. No, 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 the no, Holocaust. no the Mufti, the Mufti was the leader of the Palestine yeah. Arab National and Movement. The Leahy was 300 And he people. had as much to do with the Nazi Holocaust as I did. No, he recruited people for okay. the SS. How can you get away from that? No, he recruited People soldiers. For the SS. He recruited soldiers in the Balkans, mostly Kosovars, which was disgusting. I have no doubt about that. But he had he one. Also wrote he to got, foreign ministers he got one saying, said, "Don't let yeah. the Jews out." I knew Raoul Hill. Can I say? The, can I say? The Italian foreign minister, I knew Italian Raul foreign minister Hil- received letters from Husseini during one during sentence, the Holocaust. One sentence, during the Holocaust, the don't the let the Jews, Jews. out. Don't let the Jews if out. I, true, I'm not saying he was a true. major architect he wasn't even of the Holocaust. Minor. But if One we're agreed, sentence. if we're agreed yeah. that Hajj Amin al Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, collaborated with the Nazis yeah. during World War II and actively sought their sponsorship, why is it irrelevant? He probably wanted the destruction of European Jewry. He probably wanted a lot of things. Okay. Okay. If that's relevant, yeah. why is it irrelevant? That a prime minister of Israel. Not prime minister. In 1941, he wasn't prime minister of Israel. He was a leader of a very small terrorist group. So do you consider it as terrorist by the mainstream of Zionism? Do you consider it irrelevant that many years ago Mahmoud Abbas wrote a doctoral thesis, which is basically it tantamount something about Mahmoud Abbas? Okay, but but I don't but didn't bring it up. You're the one who's bringing yes, it up. Yes, but Did you wrote consider things, that belittling relevant. the Holocaust. That's what you're saying. The president pr- president of the Palestinian National Authority belittled the Holocaust, I said think, it didn't happen, or only a few Jews died. I think that's a fair characterization of. But I didn't bring it up. I brought it up. Yeah. Okay. Because my question is, then why is Shamir's antecedency relevant? He he was a terrorist leader of a very small marginal group. Who became Amin al Husseini was the head of the movement at the time. Also, the the point of bringing up Husseini, I think the point of bringing up Husseini stuff wasn't to say that he was a great further of the Holocaust. It's that he might have been a great further in the prevention of Jews fleeing to go to Palestine to escape the Holocaust. That was the that was the point. That and I explained why I think um, that's that's not an entirely um, accurate characterization. But and then I wanted to make another point: if it's legitimate to bring up his role during World War II, why is it? illegitimate to bring up a man who would become Israel's speaker of parliament, foreign minister. Years hence, and, years yes, hence. Why is it? And and also he was a young terrorist. And was also responsible for the murder of of the United Nations' first international envoy, Bernadotti, Foki Bernadotti. Why is all that irrelevant? I don't think anybody I don't understand. Well, I think that the, just the, the reason why he was brought up was because Jewish people at the in this time period would have viewed it as um, there was a prevention of Jews leaving Europe because of the Palestinians pressuring the British to put a curb that seventy five thousand uh, yeah, immigration but, but, limit. But, yes, but it's not about like it's not about them furthering the Holocaust or being an architect, major minor play in the Holocaust. Well, uh, actually, it was, but he was a major player in that region. So if you wanted to bring Benny up like Morris was specific, yeah. made the specific claim that the Palestinians played an indirect role in the Holocaust. The indirect role would have been the prevention of people escaping from yes. Europe and, to Yes, and Palestine. my response to that is, um, uh, first of all, I, I disagree with that characterization, but second of How all- How can you disagree with that? They prevented, they forced the British to prevent emigration of Jews well, from Europe and reaching safe shores in Palestine. Well, again, That's what they did. Again, was and they pa- knew that the was Jews Palestine, were being persecuted in Europe Was the Palestine time. the only spot of land basically, on earth? Yes, basically that was what, the problem. The Jews couldn't emigrate what about, anywhere else. What about your great friends in Britain, the architects of, of the Balfour Declaration? By the late 1930s, what they about weren't, the weren't happy to take in Jews and the Americans and, weren't and, happy to and take why, in Jews. And why are Palestinians who were not Europeans who had zero role in the rise of Nazism, who had no relation to any of this, why are they somehow uniquely responsible because for what were, happened in they, Europe they were and uniquely to culpable? Close the only safe haven for Jews. That's oh, all. really? The United States wasn't a, say, a potential sta- safe haven. The only one was Palestine. At the, time. the United States had no room 
No, from it did the have room. To Pacific it did have room. For Jews. It did have room, but it didn't so want Jews. So that wasn't the but only it safe Jews. haven. This is but something. Shouldn't you be focusing your anger America, on America should be blamed for not letting Jews in during the thirties. They are and 40s. blamed, but nobody blames them for the Holocaust. Well, indirect, they, indirectly. Indirectly, no, I've never heard it said that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was indirectly responsible for the Holocaust. I never heard that. Now, maybe it's in the Israeli literature because the Israelis have gone mad. Your, yes, your prime minister said the whole idea of the gas chambers came from the Mufti of Jerusalem. That's so, nonsense. Yeah, that, we all know that's it, nonsense. But we also know that no, Netanyahu said Netanyahu says, it. Netanyahu says, Netanyahu says so many things which are And he happens to be the prime minister's longest serving prime minister, longest serving prime minister of Israel. Israel. No, I can't you, be responsible for them. You're not for responsible them. for them. But it is relevant that he's the longest serving prime minister of Israel. Unfortunately. And, says and that, about the Israeli public. Yes, and he gets and I he agree. gets elected not despite saying such things, I, but because he says. I, I, his such voters things. don't care about Hajjamin al Husseini or Hitler. They know nothing about uh, his voters. They will be right. His base know nothing about know nothing about anything, and he can say what he likes, and they'll say yes. So they don't care if he says these things. You may well be right, but 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 uh, anyway. But, not to beat a dead horse, but I don't. I I still don't Let's understand. Not beat a dead horse. Yeah. You're right. I. I'll just conclude by saying I don't understand why the Mufti of Jerusalem is relevant. He is relevant. He is relevant. But the head of the Hedishak national Shamir the Palestinian that, because I, I Shamir don't... wasn't the head of the, the national movement. He represented a hundred or two hundred or three hundred gunmen who were considered terrorists by the Zionist movement at the time. The fact that thirty years later he becomes prime minister, that's the crux of, of and, history. And his but, and but, his but history Hajim not... Hussein, he was the head of the Palestine Arab National Movement at the time. Uh, anyway, I, what can you do? I think we're speaking past each other. We're but, not. Uh, we, I'm, I'm talking facts.